Oh, look at that. It's working already. All right. Well, first things first. Let's go here. I shaved my face hair too short, and I hate it. I hate it. Let's get you guys facing the right direction. And... All right, so it's the surprise stream. I don't know, just sitting around. Figured, let's finish the acro, Brett. And, uh, wait, actually, you know what? Sean Hales, what's up, man? Talk to you in a hot minute. Let's get this turned around. There we go. That's a much better, um, that is a much better camera. Well, cut this up on top of this newbie drone box to get a little more height here, but uh, I don't know. I don't know if I like it. I don't know. Drew's still out. We'll mess with it. All right, let me get to the um, let me get to the stream here on the computer. You guys can watch. It'll be thrilling. Just thrilling. Okay, I don't need this out anymore. Let's move this over here. And, uh, alright. Let's come up in here. Derpa, derpa, derpa. And let's see if YouTube has it up yet. Look at that. Alright, cool. Let's get this paused. Grab this. Grab over here. Dump that. All right. Come on. There it is. This is paused. There's the chat. What's a good solder to use? Um, on Amazon. There's a couple different. There's a couple different ones, but. Um, this is the easiest to get and it's cheap and it's on Amazon and it's easy. MG Chemicals. Um, and this is 60-40, I want to say. Yeah, this is 60-40. Um, 60, I have a couple small spools of, I don't know where they are, or somewhere, of the, uh, the stuff that cools faster. I don't know where they're at, they're somewhere. Uh, but, I don't know, 60-40 works really well for me. I've never, uh... I've never wanted the solder to cool any faster. Or no, I'm sorry, the, the, the other stuff cools slower, rather. Um, and I've never really wanted that. So yeah, 60-40 all day. MG Chemicals, don't use shit solder. It will um, not work well. Uh, all right, so this box is interesting. I don't know about this box, guys. Well, let's try it for a little bit. If you guys hate it then uh, I'll keep doing it for even longer. Yeah. All right, is this battery running? Yeah, all right, cool. There we go. All right, folkies. Uh, Bean says Blurple. All right, ready to go, Bean. I'm into it. Uh, can't wait for the iFlip motors. Yeah, Sean, me either. Me either. Um, that is gonna be super fun. All right, so I need to pull up, so I'm gonna lose the, ch nah, let me pull this out of this window. I need to find, I had a window open with all the uh, wiring diagrams. Tell me I didn't close that, what a pain in the ass. Did I really? I think I only really need the, uh... Surprise, motherfucker. <laughs> I think I only need uh, the Talon board. I just need to know where to go for um, VBAT and 5 volt. No, I think I have the VBAT hooked up already. I think I just need to do 5 volt. So, uh, but the pain in the ass is it's the Talon F4, I think, that I'm putting in here, not the F7. Is that right? 
Yeah, F F four oh five. So that's the old. Uh, I have to see. That's the old. Um, the old Talon, and they move the uh, the chips are in different spots on the boards, and the pads are in different spots too. So I gotta look it up. Uh, Ion, these are T motor prototypes that we shouldn't have to wait all that long for. Um, iFlight's got some 1506s coming out in a few weeks apparently. And uh, these are in that same vein. And they are really, really goddamn good. Um, the So these are really only the second set of newish motors <clears throat> that I've seen that have... Um, that's what I needed. All right, cool. Perfect. Um, that have been... Micro motors, that is. Uh, that have been designed for smoothness. Um, I think these are actually being designed for the Santa Whoops. And, uh, so, yeah, they're not like the race motors that are super notchy and super violent. Um, these are actually as smooth as the, uh, as the Rotorex Acro Brat motors, the Brat motors, rather. Um, so, yeah, really impressed by these. Alright, so what am I doing? I have no idea. So, uh... After the stream the other night, I got some stuff done, thank God, because I was actually able to concentrate. I cannot talk and work on these things. I can't talk, like, in depth and work on these things, apparently. I gotta... I guess I'll keep doing it, and in theory, I'll get better at it. So, um, let's finish this thing up. I think all I need to do is give the camera power. So, I need to figure something out. I was gonna... How was I gonna do this? So I wanted to hook up a, um, I want to set it up so that, so this little tiny plug here, all right, so I got the camera up too far, so let's adjust, let's adjust, all right, so <clears throat> previously I had a switch set up, and I could switch between the, um, I could switch over to the split. And, and in the goggles and see it and go into the menu and whatnot um, and then I would flip the switch and I would come over to the FPV camera uh, but it's just too many wires and it's just kind of annoying and I'm trying to simplify it here I don't need to switch back and forth all that often um, so what I'm thinking is I put the the video out um, of the put the video out of the um, yeah, this is gonna work. Okay, so I put the <laughs> the video out of the run cam split into this uh, female um, triple pin connector, and then I pulled the two power pins out of it. I then ran VBAT power to the split uh, from the back, just because that's what it wants and that's what it needs. Because the split needs to run all the time. So what's gonna happen is the split's gonna power on. It's gonna automatically start recording, um, and if I ever need to look through that, I'm gonna be able to do it with. Oh no, it's not going to work like that. I'm an idiot. Oh, I'm so stupid. No, 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 no. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. No, no, no. We're good. Yep. So the split will always <laughs> power on. <laughs> and it'll record to the uh, to its memory card. And then the only time I need its output um, is when I want to look at it to change the settings. And that's going to be going through this plug. So here's the male end of that plug. Um, it's the triple. And... Little known kind of fact, Runcam, let me line this up here, um, Runcam has switched over to this new, they used to have two individual connectors, a triple and a double or a triple and a triple. Um, they've switched over to one big um, connector, which looks like this, um, a single, a big single connector. And so it's easy to go, oh shit, well I have to rewire all my stuff. No, you can just take your your three-prong male and, and just run it right in there um, and it'll go into that big connector and it sticks in there totally fine and then you can even if, if you ever need to plug both in all you have to do is shave the little uh, the little lip off on the side there you know there's that little lip on the side of the connector for your fingernail to grab um, if you clip that off and clip the one off next to it they'll actually both sit 
um, you can fill the fill this up with two plugs. Fill the one you know big six pin bastard with two three pins, uh, and they'll stay in there totally fine. Um, so yeah, whenever I need to to look at the split, I can just unplug this guy. He's gonna lose power, but that's fine. I don't care about that. Unplug it. Plug it into there. That's gonna put the video into the board through the VTX into my goggles. I can do what I need to do on the split. Unplug this again because I'm never gonna fly through the split because it's awful. Um, and plug this camera back in. Uh, which will get power and video out. I hope that makes sense. I don't really, I didn't really follow what, myself, what I was saying, but uh, you know, maybe, maybe we got there. So we basically just need to wire this camera up and I can feed it, um, I can feed it whatever the hell I want, five volt. Although no, I want to put this uh, on the, I want to share the ground uh, with the VTX on this guy. So, this is probably going to have three wires in three completely separate places. Let me look at the uh, the town uh, pin out here because I got to find. All right. So what's the orientation? That's the orientation on the screen. All right. So what do we got? I need video in. Yes, I need the video in. So, what on earth did they mark that as? Cam S, Cam S, that's it, S for signal. And then there's a five volt pad right next door. Okay, and that's in the front. So those wires are gonna be two millimeters long. Uh, VTX is a Pro 32, which it looks small in the pictures, but when you get it out of the package, um, it's like a joke how small it is. Um, if you're an FR Sky person with RXSRs, there is an RXSR on the bottom here with the pin header and then the Pro 2 perfectly fits like behind the pin header of the RXSR and then they both stop at the same point. So it is literally the size and width of, no, nah, it's a little bit wider, um, but it's, it's the length of just the board section of the RXSR. It's absolutely incredibly small. So like that tiny little package in the back there uh, is the receiver and the VTX. It's just, it's it's just incredible how small that is. Um, and I, I run the Pro 32 on 200 milliwatts, but it will go up to 400 um, if I ever need to go really far with this. Um, it's nice to have that available. Uh, okay, so orientation this way. I've got uh, camera S and I'm gonna take five volt there and then I'm gonna run the ground to the back to share the uh, the VTX ground. So, and I think, other than plugging a couple things in, we'll be done at that point. Uh, okay, so cam signal, uh, let's get the soldering iron going. Cam signal is where? Uh, one, two, three, four, five, and then three over. Okay, so that's gonna be, oh, and look, I'm already using that five volt for, oh, for the receiver, that's fine. That's fine. Um, so cam is three from the right. <clears throat> and then, oh yeah, you know, these weird little shoulder pads don't make it easy to, uh, to put two wires on one, on one pad. That might be a little annoying. It'll be fine, but yeah, I don't love that. Whatever. Uh, what do we have on the right side? Is there 5 volt on the right? There is, and I'm not using it. So there is a 5 volt off on the right here. Maybe I'll just use that one um, to power the camera. Yeah, I'll do that. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Yeah, I'll do that. Um... <laughs> Telemetry TX6 RX6, so that's the left side of this, and all right. Yeah, we're just gonna do that. That's just, and then that's camera control there. All right, this is not gonna be the cleanest, but um, the way this board is laid out is a little strange, but it'll work, it'll totally work. Um, all right, let's do it. 
Yeah, it is right now. <laughs> it's, I'm looking at the layout of this board. I'm like, w why? Why is that there? Whatever, it's fine. <clears throat> it's fine. The uh, the F seven boards are better. The, the the F seven boards. I think the layout makes a little bit more sense. Um, check out this fancy little setup. Nah. Fuck it. I have the solder like in the corner of the workbench that kind of spools itself out. It's kind of fancy. Not really though. Uh, Alright. Alright. Let's get this going. Uh, so, today was a cool day in terms of the mailbox because. One, two, three, four. Uh, my B Brain tester was in it. Um, it is their. Uh, the new brushless cockroach frame, and it is the their new brushless board, um, a new diversity version of their receiver, and uh, they've got a new prop for the and and their their brushless um, brushless 0802s. Um, so that was cool. Unfortunately, though, it blew up. Uh, the receiver, I should say, uh, just failed. <laughs> I, uh, I tried to bind it. I wasn't binding it right. They didn't give any instructions for the receiver or anything. So um, I was trying to bind it like we bind all of our other shit by holding the button down. Um, and apparently that's not how you bind it. Uh, but that was okay. And I did it in D8 initially. And um, it didn't bind, so then I switched my QX7 over to D16, tried to bind it, it didn't bind. Then I looked it up on their website, and their website said D8, and I said, okay. I went back to D8, and it won't power on. It, it seen, and it's happened to a couple other people. Um, it seems to have somehow bricked it when it, I guess, I mean, when it bound on uh, D16, somehow that bricked the goddamn thing. <laughs> so, um, yeah, it's, I think it's happened to three of us so far, which is just really goddamn annoying, but whatever. So we're going three over for this one. Um, so yeah, uh, in a second, when I'm done soldering here, I will uh, grab it and put it in front of the camera. It's really nice looking. Um, I'm really looking forward to fly it, uh, flying it. I haven't flown a Whoop in many, many months. Since Rampage, actually. Um, my wife has flown more Whoop than I have in the last, like, year, I'll bet you. Um, so, yeah, that was kind of a bummer, but uh, hopefully they shoot a new one out, and I'll solder it in, and we'll be good to go. The receiver's pretty impressive. It's a, it's a, a diversity free sky... Um, a uh, receiver that only weighs 0. 0.9 of a gram. <laughs> I was kind of blown away by that. Uh, I do think the Tarsier is good, good win, uh, but it is also a, 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 it's not a finished product. Uh, it is just, it, it's literally like a prototype. Like, it, it, they should not have, I'm willing to bet they full, they didn't really do any kind of a prototype phase, um, and they just pushed it out. Um, and that's exactly what it feels like. I mean, that's that's what it is. It's something that, that didn't really have anybody that used it before um, they started selling it. Which is annoying as hell, but sort of the norm um, with, with a lot of FPV shit, which is just ridiculous. But hey, um, we let them do it to us, I guess you could say. <laughs> But, yeah, it's it's real good. I mean, if you can get past the total pains in the ass and just try to kind of ignore them, it's like usability stuff. Um, it's it's the best that we've got, but there's kind of no reason to buy it right now with the, the Runcam one coming out because the, the Runcam dual-lens split system uses uh, a, uh, an M12 lens on the HD, <clears throat> on the HD cam, which is a really, really good idea. So, just wait for that, is my honest advice. 
but if you absolutely have to get the Tarsier to work, and, and I, I love mine, and it's great, and um, yeah, but it's a pain in the ass. What's up, Jeff Style? Jeffrey Style? <laughs> nice. Uh, Goodwin, um, Noah, what'd they say? September? Noah, Noah messaged him, and they said, I believe they said, whatever next month is, I think next month is September. Um, that's what they said. So, hopefully, towards the beginning of September. September. And let's chop the black one down just a little bit. Yeah. You guys are getting to see me doing regular builds, like not just trying to fly through them. This is full, full, full OSD Ciati. This is like my. Zen is uh, not rushing through a build and just taking my time and just like getting everything perfect. It's a complete waste of time and I really need to stop doing it because um, I'm just going to rail it into something. But, I don't know, maybe it keeps me from going fully off the rails and uh, machine gunning, gunning a village of people. <laughs> <laughs> Going dark on the CI surprise stream. Alright. So, for any novice solders, this is called tinning the, uh, tinning the wires. Basically, what we're doing is pushing solder through the strands of wire, putting heat on the back of the wire with a little bit of solder on the tip. Um, to get the heat to transfer into the wire and then you push solder through the front um, So that you get as much of the solder through the strands <clears throat> Of the wire as possible and then what you end up with is a wire that, is, that has a nice blob Not a blob, but a coating of solder on the end. So there's no individual strands to be a pain in the ass um, and also it's um, it's now set up so that since I've tinned the pad, so the pad has a layer of solder on it, I don't really need to add solder. I can just put the wire up against, the, put the tinned wire up against the tinned pad, apply heat, and that solder will all flow together and give you a beautiful um, joint with not too much solder on it. Um, sometimes with big stuff, like big battery leads, you might need to add, um, but on these little 30 gauge and 28, 26 gauge, um, hell, even up to like a 20 gauge, um, if you tin properly, if you tin both of them properly, you, you really don't need to add any solder other than like the little bit that's going to be on the tip when you when you bring the iron in. Um, so let's start doing things. I should be doing this with helping hands, but um, this frame has like lots of spots that you can kind of rest stuff on and uh, yeah. that and then we'll flip that one in all right cool so yeah the way you solder to this board is from the side the um, which I don't hate they put like they basically think of like through holes but then you you chop it in half you, you like bandsaw the board in half right down the middle of the through holes so you have half of the um, uh, you have half of the through hole left so you just put the wire like as if you were going through the through hole, um, but just in the side of it, and then you just push, uh, you just push in towards the board, and the solder flows, and Bob is your fucking uncle. Uh, so yeah, you just literally like hold it here like this, apply heat to the outside, it melts in, give it a second, and I like to pull up on these, um, Pull up away from the wire and that really does a good job at kind of um, smoothing the solder out so that there's no sharp edges to like catch on the battery strap or anything like that. Um, get in here and test it, really give it a good jab and we're good. Mm. Let's put this black wire down because it's going to go under the board. That's the ticket. 
So now we're going to try to piggyback. We're going to see how easy or hard it is to put two wires on the same one of these wacky little pads. Might be totally fine. And I'm actually doing this with a pretty dry um, solder tip just because I got a good amount of uh, solder on the wire, on the exposed wire when I tinned it. So that was pretty damn easy actually. Um, huh. That's slick. I, uh, I kind of like that. I just want to make sure the bottom is, uh, the bottom is good to go. I want to make sure I didn't just only solder the, uh, the tip here and it's not transferring the heat all that well. So let's get just a little bit on here. And hopefully that's not too much to go over the other pads. Oh, that's better. There we go. Why does it keep, it, it looks like it's just the, the bottom that's sticking. Oh, let me actually look at this damn thing. Nah, it's fine. Yeah, it's totally fine. But, test it. Alright, I'm pulling on it pretty good and it's not even budging. So, that one's good. So now we're going to run the uh, ground underneath and put that in the back on the um, share the ground with the VTX. Uh, well, there's the VTX ground. Okay, good. Um, all right, so let's make sure that we don't solder it down going in like some weird wrong direction. So I have to unsolder it to. Uh... Hey, what's up, Jamie? How are you? Um, I saw that a text came through from you, but I didn't see what it was because the stream was going and it was just at the top of my screen, um, but I'm not going to be on for super late tonight. So I will talk to you in a bit. Who else is in here? Let me look up for a second. As soon as I get this where I want it. Ah, there we go. Okay. Uh, 611 FPV, 661, not 611. Um, oh man, I missed a whole bunch of comments. I've been just yapping on. Uh, Bells it and they will come. Nice. <laughs> I like that noisy. That might be the uh, title of the next one. Uh, Dude, I'm so blown away by the Cadex Rattel. God damn it, I keep hearing that about it. Um, that I can't use any other camera. Have you tried it? I have not tried it, Jeff Freestyle, but... Here's my question to you. Have you tried a Micro Eagle? Um, even better yet, have you tried a Micro Eagle with an RC25G in it? Um, that's the wider angle lens. Um, Noisy has a couple of Rattels, but he's a Ron Cam Eagle 2 Pro guy. I think that's the big version of the Eagle Micro uh, with the bigger sensor. Cadex is second only because, yeah, I know, right? 45 bucks for the Eagle Micros, or I guess any of the Red Eagles is nuts. Um, Updated from 357 to 405. Awesome. 661. You're going to love it. Um, that noisy. I'm into the build. Yeah, man. I, I really was. Uh, clean flame. <laughs> oh, my God. Awesome. I got into this at post clean flight. I got it. I, I've never seen base flight or clean flight or any of that nonsense. Um, so, lucky me, I guess. From what I've been told. All right, let's get this ground on, and then that'll be it for this soldering iron. So I'm gonna try to do this super, super, super neat and tidy because um, it's a little tight back here. Um, and I'm actually gonna need to do this. I hate having to do this, but I'm really gonna have to. And this is gonna be a bitch for you guys to see, but I will try my best. So this is gonna be a little challenging, just because I want to do it with this little cable as possible um, just so it's super clean the reason I do this is when a when a wire is gonna have to run under well between I should say the um, flight controller and the ESC uh, I really like to get it as as tight but tight but loose <laughs> to uh, to use steel talk um, 
not so tight that I'm worried about it uh, tearing off and breaking, blah, blah, blah. But not so loose that there's much of a chance of it banging up into the, uh, to the flight controller or even worse, vibrating against the flight controller um, with the inherent oscillations of our flying vibrators. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's kind of one of those things like it, I'm also in a spot where I'm, I'm not tearing builds down nearly as much as I used to. Um, so you can kind of do this shit. Like if, if you find yourself pulling builds apart every, every couple weeks, I would not do this. Right. Um, because you're going to put it, you're going to switch something and all of a sudden this cable is going to be too short, um, that you just cut. And, uh, yeah, that shit drives me up the wall but this flight controller is here to stay um, as is this two camera system I think although I don't know maybe maybe I'll go to the if I really like that uh, twin lens run cam um, maybe I'll swap this out and go to the single go to just that instead of these two cameras but I really don't mind having these two cameras yeah Jeffrey style Hell yeah, man. That's such a huge move for our very own tiny little stellar fox. So proud of that girl. Well deserved. Hard work pays fucking off. Um, man, base flight. You guys are talking base flight up in here. Jesus. So, that's big. Fucking, oh, so that, that's from the side of the soldering iron. So I just, I felt something kind of drag on my finger just now, and it was uh, when I was putting heat on to, to do the double red wire on there. Um, I must have just barely touched the, the ground, and it Hershey kissed a little bit of the solder out. All right, so let's test this uh, black one. I can see that it looks totally fine, um, but let's put some pressure on it to see. Good. Be careful, you idiot. Okay, now we're fine. All right, plug a couple things in and away we go. Ugh. Um. So, let's see how these wires are going to run under here. So this is what's that? Five volt? What the hell is that? I thought I wanted that to be VBAT. Oh man. Because I don't think the. Um... I gotta look it up. Will the run cam split to take um, 5 volt? Man, I shouldn't have it pulling on the 5 volt regulator, regulator anyway. Shit sticks. Although maybe that's the other, oh, you know what? It is, I bet you it is. Let me look at the pinout real quick. Um, I think there's two. Wait a second. All right, so I have a look at the bottom of the board. Did I just do that wrong? I ran it to the front. It's right next to that. I think I just put... Um, I think I just put VBAT to the camera rather than the... Um, rather than the, the run cam. Which is what I wanted to do. I think... I fucked up. So... That chip is on that side. No, no, no. Okay, okay. No, I'm good. Oh, right. No. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I... I <laughs> the Pro 32 is 5 volt. Uh, is a 5 volt VTX. Right. I'm used to tramps. I'm used to, um... I've been cheating on the micro game quite a bit in the last year. Guys and girls. And, uh, that is a byproduct of that. I'm, I'm used to running full voltage to um to tramp btx's yeah noah's dead on the money 
1304 RCXs or apparently the 1304 spin techs are really good if you don't want to wait if you don't want to pay $25 in shipping from my RC Mart because um, that's $25 shipping from my RC Mart is two day so like if you can get a bunch of people together or just order a shitload of stuff I mean it, it's really worth it um, but otherwise the regular shipping takes like two weeks like the $5 shipping or whatever the hell it is takes like two weeks so um, yeah if those I'm pretty confident that those Spintech 1304s are really good, because um, I've heard that from a bunch of people I trust, so, yeah. There's that. Um, what else could be jacked up with this? I think we're alright. I wish I'd shortened this a little bit. There's no reason for this to be so long, but I'll find some little clever way to, uh, to tuck it in around something or other. Um, alright, so let's plug the receiver back in. Oh, that's what I wanted to do. Right. I wanted to um, run these wires. So one of the last things I'll do is take a look at the the way the wires are running under the board here um, and basically make clear and defined paths for them, hopefully front to back so that they're not crossing over one another because when they start crossing over one another, they tend to get thicker and that's when they can touch the... Um, uh, start touching or rubbing against the flight controller which can foul the gyro readings. Um, so, let's see what we can do. This is long enough, looks like, to run around there. Yep, so that's good. And then, what are we going to run down the middle? The receiver? Yeah, we're on the receiver down the middle. And then, that one goes to that side, so that's good. Let me just give it a little love. And I also try to kind of like tuck them around the big components, like the like there's a big five volt regulator brick down here, so I'm gonna actually tuck this ground wire like next to it, and like the wire usually has enough. Um, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what a word would be for what the wire has. You bend the wire and it stays. Whatever, <laughs> whatever the word for that is. Um, it's got enough of that where you can usually do this and it will stay. Um, so, that is the way that I want them to run. Pull this guy down and check it and see if they stayed. And they did. So, every little um, bunch of wires has its own little strip down below. So now we can get to plug in. Um, something else you can do at this point is like <clears throat> set these guys up in a way that they hold each other down I guess you could say um, so like if you've got like like the VTX power wire it's kind of naturally coiling in the way that I want it to anyway but if it if it wanted to like peek up towards a prop or something I could hold it down with this um, receiver wire just just think don't don't just get to this point and, ah, and just slam it together and, and go out and destroy it um, give it a second of, of forethought so that you're not sucking wires out into props because uh, you'll spend 10 times as much time repairing that uh, than taking a minute here at this point to just kind of think it through. And uh, yeah, we are building shit that flies through the air. We don't want to hit anybody in the face if at all possible. So there's the RXSR plugged in. Um, now I want to figure out what to do with this um, motor signal wire, and here's a perfect example, right? Like I could run it through this yellow and green, but I'm going to leave it on top because it's going to it's going to kind of hold it forward like this. Um, so let's get this guy in here, and that'll be a nice little bundle of wires. Uh, the other thing that I try to give some thought to is. Uh, keeping the video wire away from the battery leads. Um, so I'm just, I just want to make sure that I'm not, so the video wire is on this little bundle, and I just want to make sure that I'm not pushing it right on top of the, uh, the battery leads. It kind of comes down right in between them, so I mean, we'll see. It's, it's feeding to a, uh, a run cam micro spiral, so we should be totally fine. <clears throat> Rush VDX is, yeah, I've, I've been hearing really good stuff about them too. Um, yeah, and that $25 one, I mean, Jesus, 25 bucks. That's the one that I have in a super cheapo basher backup build. 
Um, so I'm going to leave this. I, I, I don't think this is putting these too close to the, um, to the battery wires. But we'll find out the first time we give it the throttle so the pins are on the top. All right, so I have to rotate this guy. Uh, rotate it inside, rotate it outside. Let's rotate it outside. Get up in there, friend. Get, get, get. Go, 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 go. All right. We in. So now we'll move the flight controller around a little bit. Make sure that there's nothing. So, I mean, if, if at this point you feel something hanging up, like that was a real problem. If it's that obvious, um, usually at this point you can't really feel much of anything. So, yeah, that's in there. Uh, I think I have just enough room to do lock nuts on these maybe um, nah probably not unless I sink the um, unless I run the, the lock nuts on upside down so the lock nuts have like you know on the top of them where the nylon is the metal actually narrows down um, and with these uh, with these guys you can kind of use that to your advantage put them on upside down like nylon down and um, you know what I need I need a uh, an M2 driver Look, I, I think I added one on Amazon because the nylon, the nylon rather, on these is strong enough that my little grabber thing won't spin it. So you gotta sit here and do it nut face by nut face with the uh, goddamn pair of tweezers. Sometimes you even need to break out the, you don't know, those pliers. It's just annoying. Need a little Wiha M. I don't like the driver's called M2. It's like uh, some weird number. Some weird series of numbers and letters. Uh, do you think you could use a real pit to switch between cameras? Oh wow, I have no idea. I mean, well, all the real pit would do is would be to shut one camera off, though, right? See, so I, I mean, that's to my knowledge, that's really all the real pit is. Is like a bulletproof power switch, right? So I guess you could hook two of them up. Two of them up. Although, why would you? You would need to power off. Well, that's interesting. I wonder if you, if you put two cameras through the same video wire, if just turning one off and the other on. Yeah, but then each time you turned one on, it would be, um, uh, it would hang up for a second on the. Uh, um, on the SWAC screen. Uh, Goodwin, so these are prototype motors from T-Motor. Um, these are the second set of micro motors ever, to my knowledge, that have been designed for smoothness rather than just power. One of the big things with uh, micros is most of the motors are made for the racing community, um, so they sacrifice smoothness for power. Uh, and that makes it really, really difficult to impossible um, to get good, clean, uh, run cam split footage. Uh, so I am thrilled with these motors. Um, I don't I don't think I should talk about the size, um, but it's pretty close to being the perfect size. Um, they have a little bit too much power in, in my opinion. For most people it's actually probably perfect. Um, but for me micros are just for small spaces. Um, and for small spaces, like, I would be putting a throttle curb on these, which is, I mean, I could do that, but then, it, yeah, it's just wasted weight on the ends of the arms um, if you're going to have a throttle curb. So I, I would rather have a uh, motor with a little bit shorter of a stator. But micros are taking off, and I can't imagine that it's, la that it's, it's all that long before there's an option of, you know, 1302, 1303, 1304, 1305, 1306, 7, 8, 1402, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I, I, I have a feeling that that's uh, not too far off with the popularity gain. Hey, Ryan, how are you, man? Thanks for that, brother. I appreciate it very, very much. Yeah, he's doing real good, man. He's uh, eating on his own. He's actually being a fat pig right now. He's eating two full cans of wet food a day. Um, the vet 
still basically told us, like, just feed him as much as you possibly can, because he lost his shitload of weight. He went from, like, 12 point something pounds to 9, um, and he's, like, stuck at 9 pounds. Like, he won't, he's not gaining weight. And they said that just might be, like, that just might be it. He just might be skinny for the rest of his life. Um, but it's he's at a weight right now where, like, if he gets sick, it's going to be a problem, right? Um, but hey, we're doing all we can. We're uh, following the vet's orders. The vet is like fantastic. We we got so lucky and found this like amazing local vet. <clears throat> so yeah, we'll keep going. We will keep on going. And we have a kitten. We have a seventy-five dollar hold on a kitten there that we did when the 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 vet trip where we thought um Harry wasn't gonna make it. Um when he was in surgery none of this will make sense unless I explain this. When he was in surgery for like four or five hours, um instead of just sitting in the lobby and watching everybody come in with their sick pets, which I thought would be pretty uh heartbreaking. Uh, they had these two little, I don't know, four or five week old kittens, uh, up for adoption in the lobby, um, and they have a little playroom in the back, so they let us bring these two kittens back to the playroom, and instead of sitting there, you know, just un playing out every possible horrible scenario in our heads, uh, <laughs> we got to play with these two awesome little kittens for four or five hours, um, and then a few days later, when he hadn't eaten, and we were having all these problems, and we thought it was kind of it, when we were leaving, I said, um, hey, if Harry doesn't make it, we want to adopt, uh, one of those kittens, because we, after our old cat, Beta, died, um, we tried the no cat thing, just to see, for a couple weeks, and it was really brutal, like, just, it, 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 it was just not good. It wasn't good for our mental health or sanity. And we're going to get another cat anyway. Um, so why not get them right away? So yeah, we, we put that deposit down that day. And now it's like, well, shit. I mean, should we just do it? Two cats isn't that bad. It's not that much more work. And like, you know, they play with each other and can bother you less sometimes. But I don't know. We'll see. Blah, 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 blah. Words, 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 words. So that's what I'm talking about with putting those things upside down. You probably can't see it, but the little... Well, I can show you with an M3 nut a hell of a lot better. Um, the top part has that little lip on it up here. So what I... And the M2 nuts are the same thing. So I basically flip it upside down, and that little lip uh, pushes into the... Uh, inside part of the rubber here um, to just kind of locate it a little bit better and uh, yeah and then the nylock is fully engaged so we'll never back out um, and I put one or two of them so now is when you want to check to make sure that you didn't crank them down too tight you still want the flight controller to be able to move a little bit um, otherwise the fact that it's on rubber grommets doesn't make a difference so this one is this one is definitely moving a little bit you can see it well I can see it I'm sure you can't, but I also like to look at them from the side and just make sure like that the rubber bushing isn't like if it starts to really squish it, the rubber bushing will start to like wrap like that. Um, and th this one is starting to do that. So I'm going to just back this one out. You can also kind of do it by just looking at the top, look at where the, the screw is coming through on the top. Um, that works too. Yeah, so that's that's better for sure. On that side, now let's check this side. Yeah, it's doing it on this side. It's doing it on both on this side. So let's take a couple fractions of a turn out, and that should be good to go. One. That was a big turn. A big turd! All right, so that's it. That is everything soldered and plugged and all the things on the 
no longer fat crow brat. Turn back on monitors. Come on. There we go. Who's got, uh, you guys are super quiet in the chat tonight. Somebody, somebody ask a question. Somebody, uh, somebody say something that'll inspire conversation or I'll kill you. Cause I don't have anything else to tell you. What did I put in the title of this? Um, uh, I will put it on a scale. Let's, uh, let's slam it back together. Cause there's stuff missing like the, uh, like the, uh, props and plates and other nonsense. What did I call this? Surprise stream, acrobat, newbie drone. Oh, 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 I didn't show you guys the, uh, the wolf yet. So here it is. Wait. I forget you saw that. I don't know if we're supposed to show them yet. Luckily, nobody watches my shit, so we should be okay. <laughs> I signed an NDA. I forget, I forget if the NDA talked about, um, showing pictures of it. I think it might have. Whatever. Nobody screenshot that and get me in trouble with newbie drone, please. <laughs> um, damn it. I want to show you guys, but I don't want to have to read that NDA. I'm not... I love you guys, but... You're... You're just... I don't love you as much as I hate reading through legal shit. <laughs> so, sorry, but... You probably just saw it anyway. It looks like a fucking tiny whoop. <laughs> like, there's absolutely nothing um, that you haven't seen before um, or that's going to shock you. Um, it's not the drone they're looking for. The light was covering half of it. Perfect. Oh, good call. All right, so that's good to know. So, like, my mouth level is about as high as I can go with that light before it's in the frame. All right, so let's uh, slam this little shitbird back together. Um, let me do this, too. Let me, go, uh, let me go wider angle. And you guys can tell me what's better. Let me tilt this up a little bit. Because, um, like, I can't tell, right, if... If you guys can't see the details at all, um, then it might as well be back this far, right? But if, if you can kind of see the details, then I can understand um, it being closer up, being better. But yeah, I mean, it's early days in the, in me streaming here, so we'll try a bunch of different things, because these streams are all going to suck anyway, because uh, I haven't done it 8,000 times yet. So yeah, uh, let's... Screw this um, Micro Sparrow 2 in. Do I have... I think these are the ones. <laughs> Favorite color? No, I don't really have one. Um, I never... I never bought into the whole having a favorite color scam. I've been doing the red and purple thing on all the quad, sort of 90s inspired, um, when Kristen and I did the logo last year. Um, and then, oh man, I made this a little too short. I, I mean, not actually too short, but um, I wish I'd made it a tiny little bit longer. I think this screw's gonna be too long, but let's see. It's threading in there for days. No, it's good. It's good. All right, there's the other one. So I need to wrap this guy up in a way that it's not gonna come out and get in the props. So it comes out of there. So let's go. Let's go over here with it. Uh, antenna is a, it's just an axi. It's, it's true RC, true RC makes the Lumiere axes. Um, so this is a true RC, but it's the same exact thing as the axes. Um, it's just not, you know, they're just white labeling them as Lumiere. Um, and Lumiere calls it the axi or AX2, whatever the hell it is. Um, but it's all the same thing. Um, 
any of these little tiny, even the Foxy or Lollipop 3, um, any of these little uh, tiny little circular polarized antennas are fantastic. Um, I, I also don't want to, I just started to jam this plug connector down here. If you're going to do that, make sure you're jamming it against the ESC and not against the flight controller. Um, if I can get this to wedge down uh, where it's only touching the ESC, that's probably a decent enough spot for it. Um, but if there's any chance of it rotating up and hitting the um, flight controller, I'm not going to do it. So it's down there now. Let's see if I can turn it. If I can just like turn it to the side. This is why working on micros is maddening. Stuff like this. Um, oh, you goddamn son of a bitch. Alright, cool. So it's down, and now what I'm going to do is just pick this power cord up over it, and that's going to keep it from rotating up and touching the flight control. You guys probably have absolutely no idea what I'm doing because I moved that camera away. I moved it away just in time to do something really intricate and uh, impossible to see even if the goddamn thing was close. So, you know, we got that going for us, guys. And girls. Okay. Frustration is setting in. As it does when building micro. And I just bashed my head on the light. So that definitely didn't make me a little bit angrier. Definitely calms me down. That's how it works. When bad things happen. I don't freak out. I'm going to do this backwards. I think I need to use the... Yeah, yeah. This is... Yeah. There you go. Move the work. Move... The Volk. There, get down there, you little shitbird. That's the stuff. Okay. Okay, that should be okay. Um, we'll see. The first time it takes a big slam, we'll see if it wants to come up and out. Or if it'll hang out down there like a good little connector should. Alright, sweet. What it won't do is uh, come out into the props. The Just looking at the way it's kind of in there, you guys won't be able to see it. Uh, <laughs> Your Majesty. <laughs> nice, bud. Uh, soldering Iron uh, asks Ryan, a really old one that my dad got me way back when. Um, my dad is uh, has been an electrical engineer for 30 plus years before he retired. Um, so anything remotely I mean, and in terms of soldering like he worked on a uh, plasma fusion reactor at Princeton Plasma Physics Lab for a lot of years um, they actually sent him to NASA to do a week-long soldering school um, and then later on in his life when he was um, uh, working at the college that I went to uh, Trenton State College the College of New Jersey uh, he I think he taught us a full-blown soldering class uh, there. So he's kind of a ninja. This is not an expensive soldering iron, I don't think, but they don't really have to be. Um, they just can't be garbage. You know, like, as long as the soldering iron isn't total garbage, um, it's fine. And for the most part, if you spend more than, like, 60 bucks, you're going to be fine. It's going to get plenty hot and stay plenty hot for what we're doing. What else we got? Uh, iFlight motors better come in purple. God damn it. Uh, antenna, soldering iron. Uh, that's a split. Yep, this is a uh, split, and I'm running a dual camera setup. I have the Tarsier on a uh, rig that really just essentially doesn't support uh, a two camera setup. Um, yeah. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know if I'll keep this two camera forever or if I'll do that run cam split dual lens thing because that does just simplify it um i don't know it's going to be like 80 or 90 bucks though right and i have like two other rigs that i want to put that on so it's like uh, i don't know they're going to get expensive I, I i 
God damn, if there was one sponsorship, like the one dream sponsorship would be Runcam. That would be so, so, so cool. Why? Yeah, so I loosened this one a little bit too much. Let me go back down. I loosened it up so much that the, uh, what I was showing you guys, the little top part that slims down kind of popped out. There we go. That's what I wanted. Oh, that's why it was... I see. I see, said the blind man. We're fine. I'm being insane. Yeah, we're fine. Everything's okay. There is a consideration, though, with this, um, with the acrobat frame that you have to keep in mind, which is that this uh, clean plate, it's going to move, right? So you got to make sure that it's not going to hit anything on the flight controller like your USB port, which is why I always run the USB port down um, when I build acrobats. Um, we found that out the hard way when... Uh, when Tommy first sent the prototypes out, there were like three of us that smashed USB ports within like the first week. Um, <laughs> because, you know, clean, dirty frames haven't been haven't been a thing in a long time, so you just don't ever. They're way before my time, um, so you just don't ever think to check that. All right, so let's get this rest of the way back together, and I'll probably call it once once this thing's done. Ugh. I have a fresh build that I'm doing after this, and then I'm doing, um, I'm building Jamie actually, a three inch, uh, two and a half inch rather, rig. Anybody that was asking, I do have an answer now for you guys, um, anybody who was asking what the name of the mini alien style frames that I keep showing on live streams and when I was with Bardwell, um, that is going to be called the Ripper DX. Um, so I mean, it's going to be called the Ripper. Uh, it is an homage to, so wrote the, the creator of Rotorious FPV, uh, Rotorious being the company that's going to be making it, um, the, the guy who started it all, uh, Jack, is, uh, it's an homage to him. And the DX um, is a shout out to his son, Dax. So, cool little story behind the name, and I think it also does fit the character of the, uh, of the quad, because it's going to be a little ripper. Um, but Eckhart and I just have to get it done. <laughs> um, we just got to finish it up. I, I think that we have all the ideas figured out and, and the tweaks that we're going to make because um, it's basically like version 4 of the uh, CB3 so there's not like oh, you fucking idiot. Ugh, when you run these TPU things to do the dual camera mount you have to put the, um, the standoffs in first or else you can't get them in because the TPU is pocketed. So let's see if I have enough purples left. Nope, I only have one. So I guess we're going black on this guy. We'll go two purple in the back. All right, I'm gonna get some more 25 mil blurple. Uh, standoffs. Flurple. Eh. Eh. Get in there. Get in there. Alright. It's on one side. No, it's not. You know what? I will screw it into one side. That'll bury it. There we go. All right, what other questions do we have? Uh, ZDK, I think I answered your question without even realizing you'd asked it. Um, if I had another here, I might 
I may very well, I, I may have put it in here. Um, just out of laziness, not necessarily laziness, but just clean builds. Um, it's another set of wires with the second camera, which if you can avoid an extra set of wires, avoid an extra set of wires. It's just one more failure point and wait. Eh. There we go. All right. Now we can screw some things in again. Uh, how do you set up your ESC cap on the Brat? Um, I actually like the way that Tommy does it, but I think it's overkill. Uh, Tommy puts it right here, or no, he puts it up here. He zip ties it to this top uh, standoff and just hangs it here. Uh, I used a smaller one. He uses a thousand UF. Um, I use a much smaller one. I think it's a 330. Uh, let me see if I can read it. Nah, I can't read it, but I think it's a 330, and I put it right here behind this rear standoff. And it's on the clean plate, so it, it does wiggle and move around, but I just gave the wires a little extra bit um, so it can easily move around here, and it's just a great little spot for it. Um, totally out of the way. Um, yeah, just a... I don't like putting it in the back here because the clean plate can hit it and it's just, I don't know, I just don't like it back there. I, I had one back there for a little while. Um, you can't zip tie it to the rear standoff down here because the zip tie thickness will sandwich the standoff between the bottom plate so you're, you won't have a clean plate in the back anymore because um, that, that grommet won't be able to compress. But, yeah. I like where I have it. For me, just, I mean, finding a place for a cap, it's it's more like, it, it's just all about, like, function. Like, where where can I put it that keeps it as far away? So it's it's getting VBAT, right? And it's it's getting them straight from the battery terminal. So the it's not necessarily uh, all that clean. So where can I put it to get it as far away from the battery, from the, um, uh, the video wire coming back to the VTX is a big part of, how I choose where it's going to go. All right, I think that's about 30 degrees. Uh, do I have one more? M2. No. Um, I don't know what length this thing needs. Let's try a six. See how that is. Nah, it's going to be too far. Five it is. All right, so and um, so for camera angle on this guy, I set it to uh, the angle of this the front piece of the frame because um, I think I asked Tommy at some point. And I think he told me that this he made this thirty degrees. So if you just line your lens up with the with the face of the front of the Acrobrat, you'll get thirty degree up tilt, which is what I prefer because it's kind of the best of both worlds. I can fly pretty damn slow with it. Um, but you can also haul total ass with it. And yeah. Looks to be about the same, might be up a little bit too high. Yeah, there we go. So this is twisting a little bit more easily than I would like, which might mean that these are too long and they're bottoming. But let's give them another crank and see what happens. Nope, 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 not too long. Alright, yeah, that's a good uh, that's a good eyeball. That, my friends, an echo brat. Uh derpa derpa derpa, blind TPU, yep. Uh, new frame only coming three inch or will two two and a half be available as well? Great question. Your rando. Your rando. What's the story behind that name? Your rando. Rando, right, like a rando person. Got it. I'm old. Don't mind me. Um, it will be available with, so one of the big reasons that uh, we're going with the removable arm design over a unibody, which is much more commonplace on micros, is so that um, we can sell a two inch set of arms, a two and a half inch set of arms, a three inch set of arms, a four inch set of arms. Um, Christ, even a five inch set of arms if we really wanted to, but I think that would break the uh, the center portion. Um, hell, the four-inch arms might even break the center portion, but 
uh, we'll find out. It's it's mainly built to be a three inch, but yeah, it there'll, there'll be a lot of uh, options there, which will be really cool. And for Eckhart, um, he won't have to keep. Uh, it, it's less to keep in stock, right? Um, so that'll be really cool for him. Instead of having to keep unibodies for each size, um, he just have fucking stacks of arms. Um, and it'll be cheaper for everybody, right? Once you buy the center canopy area, um, you just buy the same parts over and over and over again. So you're kind of half, you're, you're half fleeting out. Um, and I've recently finally kind of chosen a five inch frame that I like enough to, uh, get multiples of them. And I've begun to kind of fleet out my five inch setups. And my God, is it nice to just have the same thing over and over and over again. Um, so that you can move parts around and there's just like all these benefits that I didn't think of. I, I knew it was something that I wanted to do, um, but it was kind of more important to me to find the, the components that I really, in, that I really like that I didn't feel like were going to hold me back at some point. Um, so yeah, I, I don't think, although I don't know, man, I mean, you could totally just like, you could totally just look at Kevin's setup and say, I want to fly like Kevin, and just buy exactly his setup, and be good forever. Um, so, I mean, there is something to just not being a complete idiot like me, and uh, having to, like, personally test everything. If you trust a seasoned, you know, or even pro pilot, like Kevin or Steele or John or, I mean... You know, take your pick, Willard. You're 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 not gonna go wrong. Um, but I love tinkering. I think it's one of the fun things about this hobby, and I love testing stuff. Um, my year rando. I'm 38, man. You got me by only two years. Uh, the five inch frame that I finally settled on is Bob Ruge's new Glide frame. It is one of the only and the toughest that I've been able to find um, lightweight five inch frame that is kind of just simple. I, I have no interest in like, so an extreme example would be this smooth operator. Um, great frame, but just too much going on, too many things to break, too many points where I don't know. I mean, it just looks like a nightmare to work on. And like, I, I just, I don't want that. I just want something that's simple. You know, I, I don't like vertical carbon. Um, so th th there's some like deal breakers that I have with frames. And this, this one has almost none of those deal breakers. Um, the only weakness is the arms. Uh, I've broken quite a few arms. But here's the thing about that, right? The arms don't break when I don't expect them to. Like, the, every single time I've broken an arm on the glide frame, not necessarily from the noise that it made, but like when I was walking to the quad, it was just like, all right, that was gnarly. Like that was a big one. It's, it's kind of like, have you ever looked, have you ever wrecked? And then as you're walking out to it, you're looking for the pieces of the quad. It, it's, it's like those hits, right? The ones where it's, Ooh, if, if there's anybody flying with you, they're, you know, them and everybody else are, Ooh, holy shit, what just happened? Um, and Quite frankly, on those slams, most of the time, um, it'll break a motor bell, too. And so there's this kind of, I don't know if it's a theory, but a thought process of make the arm the weak point, right? Like, the arms are really cheap, and they're re really easy to uh, swap on and off, especially on the glide. Uh, so why wouldn't the arm be the weak point? And... If you get, I guess, if you get it just right, every time a motor bill hits, hits the ground, uh, the arm will break. I've, I've bent quite a few motor bills, so th this isn't quite there. I don't necessarily know if I would want this to be quite that skinny of an arm, um, weak of an arm. But, yeah, I, I have to feel like... No, I have to feel like... I do feel like the, um, the arms on the glide are just sort of the right balance of strength and let the damn thing break to, to try to salvage the motor. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, 
and then yeah, the packaging of the frame just really works. The the um, the flight controller sits up in the front, which I really like, so you can drop it down on 20 millimeter standoffs really really easily. Um, you get to run your camera output straight down to the flight controller, and then the VTX out can go um, just straight out the back under the ESC, nice and far away from the um, from the motor wires. A lot of like little things. The the um, the stack bolts are fully um, isolated from the um, from the bolts going through the arms. The the two front arms connect. Oh my god! And then the um, that was evil to do to all of you. I gotta learn to silently yawn so as not to have thirteen other people falling asleep. On the damn stream. Hey, um, for anybody that wasn't at the last one, the community kind of uh, browbeat me into setting up a Patreon, which I have. Uh, I think it's just like patreon.com slash CIDFPV. What's up, Sidewinder? How are you tonight, man? Uh, let me look it up because I should learn it so that I can tell people. Yeah, patreon.com slash CIDFPV. Um, I am going to use that as like my super secret, um, scratch pad, uh, where I put things and thoughts and, uh, reviews and just shit that's going through my head that I think would be of some value to the community. Uh, I can also put stuff, I guess I can put like, no, I guess I can't put prototype testing in there. I was just thinking, can I just straight up take a picture of this bee brain and put it in there? I mean, technically, there's only seven people that are going to see it, but um, yeah, I can't do that. That's a terrible idea. So yeah, that'll be fun. I I'm looking forward to that. Uh, I don't have a whole, I mean, I, I the little about me section, I'm treating like, again, like a scratch pad right now, trying to come up with ideas. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think off the top of my head, like, what other things I can do that'll be of some value. Um, because basically, like, with the cat and some other things going on, um, I am not going to have any budget for this hobby for probably the rest of the year. Um, so hopefully, and I'm up to 20-something bucks a month already. Um, I mean, if I can even just get to, like, 100 bucks a month, right? That will be great. I mean, that'll that'll probably be enough to kind of keep stuff up in the air and maybe have a couple bucks to pick up a micro part or two a month um, to do a review on. Because I, I definitely do want to uh, get back into reviewing since that is like the way to get people to watch you on YouTube. And I need to get the uh, I need to get my hours viewed up on YouTube so that I can do. Um, super chats because everybody says like they're just awesome so yeah there's that and i just put this battery strap on backwards which is frustrating or did i i'm gonna leave it like this i've never put it on this way i'll see how it is to wrench the battery strap over in that other direction so there it is i think i forget anything <laughs> i don't know there's a lot of washers in here there's a lot of wires in here what Nah, I think we're good. Yeah, we're alright. Maybe. Yeah, we'll be alright. So there it is. Acrobrats back together with um, what I think are the best possible motors available. Well, not available. <laughs> available to like three of us. Sorry, everybody else. Um, but they'll, they'll be available soon. Hopefully, they will take some of the feedback that I gave them um, and do it because these motors have a never mind I'm not gonna say anything um, they have one or two things that I don't love they're not deal breakers I will still buy these even if they are exactly as they are here I will 100% buy them um, but there's a couple little things that they could do to very easily make them even better um, so I'll do some of the beta flight setup on this. Yeah, that won't be that much. There's a couple things in there that that uh, you guys might dig that um, I do that are a little bit different that I've kind of like 
don't know, developed. It's a weird word for it, but um, some things that I do, some some like automatic things that I'll do within Beta Flight that uh, just kind of work every time. That'll save you some time. So let's get in here. <laughs> yeah, right, Spud. <laughs> So let's see what this Talon ships with. I bet you it's 3.5. Well, this is the F4 version, so it might be back on like 3.4. Oh no, look at that, 4.0. Did I flash this? I might flash this. So the first thing I can see is that the quad is upside down because I mounted the flight controller upside down. That, that's kind of important. Like just immediately leaving this setup tab and not looking at this is how I got that scar on my finger, and there's a little bit of it here as well. It's impossible to see. Um, but yeah, so always take a quick look at this, and if it was correct, I would also wanna do one of these to make sure up is forward is forward, backward is backward. Um, Butterfly really bit me. Because their, uh, one of their hexes had um, one of their hexes, the, the board rotation wasn't working. So you would go in and tell it that your board was upside down and it wouldn't, it wouldn't do anything. And I skipped, I, I immediately clicked configuration without looking at setup. Um, so I didn't know that. And it Tasmanian deviled into my hand off of the uh, table next to me that I was launching it from. So that was fun. Uh, so yeah, don't ever ignore that setup tab. And I, I actually, as you just saw, like I fixed this for like this is um, after that hospital visit. This is the first thing that I do. So now it's the right side up. When I tilt it back, it goes back. Forward, it goes forward. Right, right, left, and left. So we're good. Um, now we can hop back into configuration and do the other things. Quad X motors are not reversed. Get it off of one shot. Bring it up to D shot. Five point five. I don't like. That's a little high. Go down to five on my motor idle percent. Um, the reason why, yeah, and, and props off for, oh, son of a bitch, I'm gonna have to take these props off. <sighs> Whatever. Um, wait, no, I'm not, no, I'm not. I didn't switch the ESC, so I'll be fine. Um, I think ESC is rotating properly. All that's coming through from the flight controller their motor wires is the signal and that's basically just power yeah i'll be fine um i i dropped this uh idle throttle percent down to five uh because i i kind of so raising it up to, i know why they raise it up to five and a half it, it puts the idle um at a point in the throttle where there's a little bit more power to try to get rid of that bobble when you jump off the throttle that's one of the reasons there, there's i'm sure there's a, a quite a few other reasons but um, so I drop it down to five right now with beta flight four and I see if it does that bobble if it's doing the bobble I'll start to slowly raise it up but I try to run this as low as possible so that when I'm inverted it's creating as little um, upward facing thrust as possible so that it'll hang inverted for as long as, as I can get it to uh, so that's all that is arming angle um, I turn to I used to do 160 so that it wouldn't... Yeah, you know, I'm going to start doing that again. 100, 180 just turns this off. 160 keeps it from arming if it's absolutely dead perfectly upside down. Um, in which case, I don't want it to arm anyway. So it, it gives it a couple degrees, like... I don't know. Maybe if for some weird reason I accidentally arm and it's perfectly upside down on a part of my body, it'll save me. Whatever. It's never hurt me having it at 160. It's never been perfectly upside down. I've needed to arm it, right? Because it's not going to do anything if it's perfectly upside down, you arm it. Uh, 8 and 2, I don't know why they default to that, so we're going to go to 8 and 8. Uh, accelerometer is on because I run an oh shit switch that we'll talk about when we get to the receiver tab. Um, barometer and magnetometer off because there's just no reason. Craft name Ciotti. Um, Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see that, but it's Ciotti and a 8 equals uh, greater than Dick next to it. Um, spectrum to S-Bus. 
because we're on an RXSR. Um, RSSI signal strength is off. I don't want the analog output because I send it back with the radio. And um, just make sure these are all good. Uh, I actually turn air mode off here because I don't want to permanently enable it. OSD on, anti-gravity on, dynamic filter on, uh, telemetry on because it's an RXSR with telemetry. Uh, the only other one of these that I ever used is soft serial on older flight controllers that don't have enough UARTs. Uh, but the Talon does not fall into that category. D-Shot Beacon, we're going to turn both of these on and we're also going to type um, beeper all in the CLI just to make sure that the beeper works. Save and reboot. I just leave these all on. Um, let's go do that right now while we're thinking about it. And it's beeper all. And it says enabled all and save. I don't know, that used to be a, you used to have to do that because it was like kind of sort of a bug. Um, not really a bug, but just something they missed. Uh, all right, ports tab. Uh, let's see. And I wired it the way that um, they wanted me to. So I can just refer to this. Uh, S bus is on one. Um, telemetry is three. Smart port and tramp is on four. Not tramp. Smart audio is on UR four. And there we have it. That's the ports tab. Um, if I ha if I just randomly put it to UART, you just trial and error that. But don't do that. Do what they tell you to, and then you'll always be able to look back at that if you lose your flash. On micros, I crank these uh, minimum and warning voltages down to three by 0.1, so 3.3 on the minimum to 3.2, um, 3.5 on the warning down to 3.4, just because micro batteries sag so bad. Um, Amperage meter, I don't feel like screwing with. I'll, I'll see if it's close and then fix it. PID tuning. Um, yeah, we'll do this now. So, let's see. Does the talent come with any kind of wacky? No, it's bay flight defaults. So I run a very, uh, we'll just drop rates in first. Um, I run the weirdest rates you've ever seen, but it is the best way that I've found to soften the center stick up to the point where it looks like um, the gimbals don't make that notch in the middle uh, where the one spring stops and the other spring begins, which is extremely an extremely low RC rate because that's the only one of these that specifically affects dead center of the, of the stick travel. Um, and then zero expo because I want to I want to dump that RC rate down as low as possible to focus on the center of the stick travel. The the expo pushes the middle of the stick travel around here, um, and I don't want to do that. Um, so yeah, zero expo, and then the super rate, I've been getting lower and lower and lower until it, it doesn't have, it, it, until it's just like, basically there will become a point with the super rate that like, when you go to, to um, recover from like smacking a piece of scraggle, it won't rotate fast enough. So that, that's kind of how I set the uh, the max velocity and the, and the super eight is like, how much, how much can I cheat this um, to go as slow as possible? Because here's the other thing that happens, right? When the, so like a super eight with like a thousand degrees per second, it really makes this knee extremely violent. So like when you get to three quarters on that stick, it just explodes and, and, you lose um, resolution out here. So by dropping that down as low as possible, um, it really smooths out. It kind of it kind of artificially gives you some expo because it's not being pulled up so high. So the middle stick um, has a lot of resolution to it. Um, and yeah, for me that's 667 uh, degrees per second. Uh, angle and horizon we're actually going to leave on because I have an oh shit switch, um, which is why I leave the accelerometer on. Uh, the D mins I'm going to bump up a little bit uh, so right now I'm thinking about this frame in relation to how the weight is distributed versus 
um, a five inch rig, right? Like five inch alien style rigs are pretty much what all of these defaults are based around. So if you look at your setup and you kind of just think like, okay, how is my weight distributed differently? You can get an idea um, for what you want to do with pitch and roll. Pitch and roll are the, are, are the biggest ones that I'm thinking about, right? So these are meant, um, these are based around uh, 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 alien, you know, alien style five inch rig with a GoPro up front and a big battery um, on the top. So with the Acrobrat, it's pretty similar, right? It's got the cameras up front, um, battery in the middle, going, ver you know, going uh, front to back, let's say. Uh, so I don't really need to screw around and like turn the pitch down in relation to the roll or anything weird like that, um, or give the pitch more or anything like that. So I think I'm just gonna kind of leave the ratio of roll to pitch alone, um, but I'm gonna bump these demons up a little bit. Uh, because I want to, to handle, it, it seems to handle prop wash better if the, the minimum that the D is running at is a little bit higher so that when it starts to prop wash, the D gain doesn't have to jump up as far. The, the higher you put this minimum, the, the closer it's going to be to a higher D gain that's going to eat the prop wash, I guess is, is one way to explain it. Um, you can also mess with that with the gain and in, in, in advance um, because they the forget which which is which but one of them is how quickly the d gain will rise when it thinks that it needs it um the other one is how early it will start rising um so that it's not like boy who cried wolf right like if 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 you have it set to be really sensitive and really start to ramp the d gain up um uh under like very uh very small movements it could it could put the D gain up to the maximum, you know, 30, 35, and 38 here um, when you don't want it to. Uh, so it's it's a little bit of a balance there, but the defaults are really, really good. They did a real good job on the defaults. Um, so just tweak those a little bit. I, I don't go nuts on the the factory tune um, right off the bat, unless it's, a, unless it's like a rig that I've built before. If it's pretty much a clone of equipment, I can just go ham with this stuff, but... I, I, I try to keep it uh, within reason initially. Uh, let's get the iTerm Relax type onto gyro, because that's a little bit more smooth. Uh, and we're going to leave it on just roll and pitch for the iTerm Relax. Um, I will, when I do quick yaw moves, if it bounces back and, uh, you know what, I'm going to add yaw in, because there's a movement that I do, um, I'm flying forward and I'll snap it backwards to look completely behind me and just let it float when I do that movement it it, it has begun to um, bounce back on yaw uh, without the yaw axis being in the eye term relax so let's do that um, and now I'm just gonna kind of take some best guesses I mean these motors are nice and smooth uh, so I'm gonna go up a little bit so I'm just gonna add 10 to the roll and pitch P gains and I'm going to add five to the yaw. You got to be careful with the yaw P. It can cause um, oscillations pretty easily. So I'll just go up by five on the yaw. I'm going to go up ten on the eye gains as well um, because I I just I know it can handle it. Not eleven hundred. Uh, and the the maximum D gains I'm just going to go up by like uh, let's say five. Um, feed forward. I personally dump all the way down. Um, because I use no feed forward as basically stick smoothing. It's, it's like a, it's stick smoothing in the physical universe, essentially. I'm taking out the push that feed forward usually gives. Um, so what feed forward does, right, you push the stick over, it sees that. It sees the RC command coming in having these steps, and it actually advances the motors in front of where you're at so like when you start to push the stick over it sees what you're doing and it advances the motors before like ahead of time essentially so like you push the stick over to you start pushing the stick over and the amount of time that it takes you to get to like let's say 10 percent um 10 percent deflection and you're still going you're, you're going to the i don't know let's say 70 percent but in the time that it takes you to start pushing that stick over it's going to see that and it's going to advance the motors to not 10% where you're at, 
probably like 60 or 70 percent. Basically, it's going to push them to whatever it needs to match your stick movement perfectly. So what I do is I turn that off so that when I start pushing it over, it act, the quad actually lags behind. So it does feel latent. Like when I let um, Schizo fly my rigs, he can't believe the latency because he has very sharp um, flight one setups that are that have like very little latency, and he's just trained his thumbs to do basically what I'm doing um, with this kind of like physical smoothing. Um, but yeah, so it, it lags behind a little bit. What's, what's cool about it is it doesn't lag behind initially. It only really lags behind at the end of the stick travel. The initial movement, it's still triggering the move, the motors. So the quad still moves the, the, the second that I move the throttle. But then when I jam the throttle over, that's when it'll lag behind. But I really like that because it really softens that out. I have a tendency to like stick bang and just bang into the plastic with the stick. So with no feed forward, the, the quad won't be like super, um, you know, violently sharp when I do that and it'll kind of soften itself out, which just looks really, really nice in the video. And like I said, I, I don't feel it as latency. I just feel it as a smoothness at the end of the, of the movement. Um, and it works really well for me. I really like it. Um, sometimes I'll do like five, lately I've been doing like five feet forward on pitch, um, just cause there is a lot of weight on the pitch axis. Um, and I, I do add some um, yaw feed forward because when I'm when I'm doing that move that I told you about where I snap back, the so it's it's a cross coordinated no it's a it's a coordinated move and I basically tune the yaw feed forward so that when I do that when it comes around it's flat. Um, when, when you first start doing that move, every time you come around you're you're off in one direction or another, and you can do it a million times and train your thumbs, or you can just um, adjust the feed forward so that it comes around right so that like what your thumbs already think is right um, is actually right because you've tuned it with the feed forward um, and I've yet to see any other issues with that the, the yaw axis really um, works well with feed forward because it's the slowest axis to respond because the yaw axis is only being controlled by the the motors physically spinning up and well, not not only um, but the main um, authority on the yaw axis is physically stopping two of the motors and physically spinning the other ones up to generate gyro like what you get on a helicopter. Um, you know, helicopters need to have that smaller vertical rotor in the back, otherwise the canopy would just spin around. Um, this is what yaw does on a quad to give you that initial um, movement with a bunch of authority. You'll notice like if you just hammer the stick over, and you have a bunch of yaw pee, it'll go real fast initially and then it'll kind of slow down and settle in. Because you, after like a split second, you lose that momentum of the motors, of two of the motors spinning up and two of them slowing down. And the only thing making it yaw at that point is the fact that two motors are damn near stopped and the other two are charging. Um, but yeah, that's what we're doing here with the feed forward on yaw. It really has a nice effect on that initial um, bit of yaw authority and, and cranking this yaw feed forward up can really add some some snap to that initial yaw um, which matches the amount of snap that you can get from the roll that you're giving on that maneuver where it can just jack two of the motors up full blast and use the thrust to uh, to make the, the quad move. Um, Alright, let's save that in here and we're going to go to the filters and just start turning them all off. Um, oh, that's interesting. 4.0.0, they had this um, uh, low pass 2 turned off. That's kind of cool. Um, so I'm going to turn off both of the, well, if this one was off, if the gyro low pass 2 was on, I would turn it off. I'm going to turn off the D term uh, low pass 2 uh, because according to Mark Spatz, it doesn't really do anything. Like it adds latency and it does very, very little. Um, I'm going to turn this dynamic D-term low pass down a little bit. Uh, let's drop it down to, so Spatz likes to drop this down to 80. Um, I'm not going to go quite that low because I'm not turning off this, uh, the, uh, the gyro dynamic yet. When I eventually, hopefully, can turn off this gyro low pass, uh, dynamic gyro low pass, I will then drop this D-term low pass down to 80. Um, but for right now, you know what? I'm going to leave it where it was. I'm going to refresh this. 
I hope that didn't just kill what I did in here. All right, now we're good. Um, all right, yeah, so I, I didn't save so that I refreshed it to bring it back to 150. I'm going to leave it at 150. Because of the fact that I'm leaving the gyro um, dynamic, not, uh, dynamic low pass cutoff, well, just because I'm leaving it on, right? Um, I'm going to leave this up higher for a little bit less latency. Um, so yeah, we'll try this out. Um, but apparently, the moral of the story is, uh, supposedly in Betaflight 4, the, um, the D-term filter does most of the work. The, the gyro filters don't do much of the work um, anymore. They just don't need to because the, the dynamic filter that we turned on um, up in here, right, this dynamic um, notch filter uh, does the majority of the work outside of any of these filters that are actually in the, uh, in the PID section here. <clears throat> so, let's get into the receiver tab here, put in a little bit of dead band, and I'm going to start one, I think. We're going to drop the stick low down to 1,000, stick high up to 2,000, just because I've I know the radio. And for some reason, when I first got my QX7 from Grayson, they set it up as TAER. Um, and I never changed it, so it's just I just do it every time. I change the channel map to throttle aileron, aileron elevator roll. I think the R is for roll. Uh, RSSI channel is probably going to be five. You know what? Screw it. I'll get the transmitter out. We'll do the whole thing. Ugh. Ah, I'm going to have to bind it. It's going to suck for you guys. Wait, no. No, no, no. This is the same receiver. What am I saying? Totally fine. Not a new build. So also tell me if I got the ports right. Hey, look at that. So we've got... Oh, i got to save it for the TA, uh, the TAER to start working. There we go. So we got roll. We've got pitch. Some yaw. And some throttle. Top right with everything. Make sure it's going above 2,000. Bottom left, make sure it's going below 1,000, we're good. We've got aux 1, that's good. Aux 2, that's good. Uh, did I move it over here? Yeah, aux 3 is over here. And then aux 4 is actually where the RSSI is. This is how you do it to run it on 8 channel mode. You can only use roll pitch, yaw throttle, aux 1, 2, 3, 4. And my aux 4 is always my RSSI. If I wasn't such a lazy piece of garbage, I would flash the uh, my RSSRs with S port. Um, but frankly, I'm getting away from F, from F, uh, FR Sky, Free Sky, uh, and going to Crossfire, so it's not worth the time to do that. Uh, I think I'm going to have to do the same thing on Crossfire, though. I think I'm going to have to to tie up a channel, um, sending the RSSI back to the um, uh, to the uh, receiver or the transmitter, rather. <clears throat> or I mean, sorry, sending. I have to send it back from the transmitter back to the uh, to the quad. So. We're good in there. Uh, now we'll talk about the uh, shit my pants switch. So arm, I put here on the big switch. Have a go one ZD. Thanks for hanging, brother. Appreciate it. Uh, and then I actually still use horizon mode. I do what? I don't want to add range. I don't want to add link. There we go. Add range. Right. Uh, so I put this on aux 2, and I have it set uh, to come on when it's all the way up. So all the way up like that is actually going to turn horizon mode off, I, or on. I make sure that I calibrate my accelerometer every time I plug a quad into beta flight so that they don't drift and get all screwy. So essentially, when I fly, my middle finger is on the... Uh, is on the arm switch at all times so I can flip it. it when I'm armed it's up so I, I rest my f finger here so I can always instantly disarm. These two fingers are on here if I get lost or I lose video or something this will be down because this is acro um, with air mode so if I'm flying and I lose video or you know God knows what happens I can flip up and that'll turn horizon mode on leave the throttle alone and pretty much whatever it was doing, it'll level itself out and just give me a second to either punch out to try to get video back or just breathe for a second. Um, I actually, I, I set this up like when I, I really don't need it. I only ever need it for when I lose video. I don't really like lose horizon ever anymore um, to where I would need to, to catch myself. But 
back when I was doing that, back back when I really would could have benefited from this, I didn't think of it. <laughs> I didn't think to do it. Um, and it saved me a bunch of times. Like, I've lost video a bunch of times, flip it, full throttle, and boom, the video comes right back. Um, so I do that by, like I said, putting horizon as the up position on that switch. And then here's another thing that I do. So I kind of ran out of switches at some point here. Um, so I set the middle of that switch to be black box on as well as um, launch mode. I don't use launch control often, so it's kind of perfect. Um, but if for some reason I want to use it, it's there. It's, it's in the middle position on that switch. And yeah, it'll trigger black box for a couple seconds while launch mode is on, but who cares? Um, and now here's the other weirdo thing that I do. Um, I talked about not permanently enabling air mode. Where the hell is air mode? There it is. Um, I put air mode on that same switch, and I only put it down the bottom of the switch. So because of the fact that I always fly with this all the way down, which is acro, no horizon, um, I also have it all the way down with air mode, because that's the way that I fly. So if I want to perch on something, I can flip up to the middle, and that turns air mode off. I can even flip all the way up if I want to. That's also air mode off, and it'll, it'll level itself, which I've never actually tried that. I've only ever gone one up. But yeah, it, it gives me a bunch of different functionality on this one switch that otherwise we don't really use much. Um, so I have like an oh shit, I have turn air mode off to perch on something or just, you know, whatever. There's weirdo situations where you want to turn air mode off. And then towards me is, is uh, ready to fly. Air mode on with um, acro. And beeper, we're going to put on to aux 3. And always make sure you put your beeper... Um, on the uh, with the switch all the way flipped like so switch flipped here is nothing one flip is going to be turtle mode and then all the way down is going to be beeper for some reason if you put the beeper in the middle and you flip a switch from nothing to beeper to turtle mode it can it can make turtle mode not work it's 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 really weird it was a it was something I realized in like 3.5.7 and it didn't change I don't think in 4 um, which is fine because now I'm used to having them set up like this, but um, yeah, that's a weird little thing. And here's flip over after crash. So we'll put that on three, and we're leaving that in the middle. So when I flip that switch into the, you know, one click is turtle mode, two clicks is beeper, which kind of works anyway because I use turtle mode way more often than beeper. So there's kind of no reason to flip past the beeper into turtle mode. Uh, maybe that's why they did it. <laughs> I'm sure it's not. And. There's the modes, motors, I'm not even going to bother with because I'm 99% sure that we're good. Um, Alright, let's get this going. Uh, it is an NTSC camera. I run the... I didn't run these warnings for a long time, um, but now <clears throat> I'm kind of digging them again. So I run that. I run the RSSI dead center in the bottom because that's the most important thing, in my opinion. Um, you know, battery voltage I can feel, <clears throat> uh, runtime, whatever. Uh, what else? We've got the timer one that I put in the bottom right. I don't know why. It's just like that at some point. Craft name I threw up at the top left, so it's out of the way. Um, <clears throat> Craft name was actually, I never had it, and then when I went to Rampage, or no, when I went to the first quad camp, everybody was like, oh, who is this on channel four? It was just impossible, so it's, throwing your name up there just makes it easy if, in case you're flying with multiple people. If somebody's watching you, they know who it is. <clears throat> um, MAH drawn, I've been playing around with lately. I do average cell voltage so that if I'm flying a tiny whoop on 1S, I don't have to think about it. Or at some point here, I'm going to build a 3S rig. It just makes life easier. Um, C3.5 volts, you come in and land. Done. Uh, I've been playing around with the roll angle. Um, about to sneeze. <coughs> Alright. Um, it's kind of cool to have the roll angle 
over here. I basically just had like an empty spot. I thought, what would be nice there? Having it there, as long as you calibrate your accelerometer every so often, is kind of slick. Like when I want to do, <clears throat> when I want to do like a really straight shot, I can actually look at the damn number and go, okay, I'm, I'm not at like 20 degrees. Sometimes I, I'll just like cruise at like 20 degrees of roll angle for no reason. Um, having that number there is, is kind of nice. I don't know if I'm going to leave it there, but it's kind of getting me in a better habit of, of going, getting as level as possible um, when I want to do like just a long run for, you know, just 10 seconds, just flying with only the throttle. Um, so I've been kind of doing that. And then I think that's it. I think that's all that I put on there. I should grab this from the uh, CLI so I can just copy and paste it, but I don't put a lot of stuff on. And it is kind of cool to go in here and look at, because I mean, every time they do an update, I feel like they add something. Um, so it's kind of cool to come in here and look at what's new and, and you know, what's in there. Post-flight stats, um, minimum battery good, end battery good, current battery voltage, yes, minimum RSSI, yes. Maximum current probably going to be wrong, but we'll leave it on um, just because I don't have the scale set. And then I don't see any value in these black box ones, so I turn them off. Um, good. I move my RSSI alarm up to 30. Battery capacity is going to be 650 to 850, so we'll err on the lower side. Um, timers, total armed time is what I like, and I set it for three minutes to start flashing. Um, and then I don't use the second timer, so I don't touch the second one. Um, I don't think this controls anything. TSC, uh, and we're good. Save that. And then we'll go to the font mod manager, which I think is broken. Um, but just for the sake of doing it, I like clarity a lot. So we'll upload that. And the last thing we'll do is go into black box. And no, 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 no. We got two things we're going to do. Okay. We got to change the, um, the iTerm uh, uh, rotation cutoff. But first we'll go into black box and turn it up to 2 kilohertz. And save and reboot. All right, so now, and I always like to check it. So now it's on two kilohertz and uh, it's empty already, so we don't have to erase it. And we'll go in here, we're gonna type get I term. I think that still works. Yeah, so uh, I term relax is on roll pitch y'all. Um, I term relax type is on gyro. We did those in the PID uh, menu, but what you can't change in there is the I term relax cutoff and 20 is gonna give you considerable bounce back. 20 is meant for racing. Um, so we're gonna copy this, and we're gonna go set, paste, drop 20 down to 12, and that'll take care of all the bounce back. And we be saving, and I think that's it. I think that's my full um, setup. I might be missing something in the CLI. Um, the uh, Betaflight 4 guide is fantastic. Oh, guide. Betaflight 4.0 tuning notes. Read this whole thing and then read it again and then read it a third time because there is absolute gold in here. Um, but what I like to do is I'll just hop in here to their um, like automatically awesome things and just take a quick look. Oh, they dropped that cutoff all the way down to 10. I've been having, you want to run it as high as you can because it's really helpful. Um, but uh, if it bobbles, if it bounces back at all on 12, I'll start moving it down closer to 10. This transient throttle limit is something that's interesting. I'm actually going to turn that on. Um, it can basically prevent you from cooking motors once you bend a prop. Um, I read it a couple times, but that was a month or so ago, and I just don't remember. Uh, there's the pit tune, okay, there's the mins. See, and they do the same thing, they move the mins up to 25 and 28, that's exactly what I did. Uh, demon boost, gain, yeah, that's right, they've moved the, the gain and the advance up a little bit too. Eh, we'll see if it, eh, you know what, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that as well. Let me start pasting. It's actually new that they're moving these guys up. They were they were turning the advance off in this guide for a while. That's kind of interesting. I think those are the only two things that 
I'm going to change D on the pitch and roll, TPA 50 and 1500, TPA mode is D, that's by default, I turn rotation equals off. Yep, so there's, oh look at that, that's cool, this is a new section too, very cool. Uh, 6S slash light rate responsive, yeah, I didn't, I wanted to look through this, low pass 2 on the that's interesting. Feed forward transition. Oh, I forgot to change my feed forward transition. That's the other thing I do to make the feed forward extremely active is I put the transition all the way up to one. Um, so it really backs that feed forward off down towards the bottom or towards the middle of the stick travel. Can't believe I almost forgot that. I've been doing that forever. Transient throttle limit 10. Pids that are dumped down, that makes sense. What do you do with the demons? Oh, how they really push the demon roll. Oh, okay, there it is. 18, 18, 16. Yeah, it's not surprising. Boost. Oh, there's where they take the advance out. Okay. Interesting. Well, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try that. Um, I've done that a few times, taking the advance completely out. I've never seen them. I've never seen any of these tunes push advance, so that's kind of interesting. So now that I have the higher advance, I think it's like 50. Um, yeah, I will zero it out back to and back to back it and see what's going on. Um, cool. That is where I start, and then I just try to really keep pushing the P gains. Um, monitor motor heat. Uh, the first thing I'll do, actually, if the motors aren't getting hot, is I'll turn this um, uh, gyro dynamic low pass filter off. Uh, and then if they're still coming down cool, then I'll start pushing the P gains. Um, but this amount of P gain is probably going to be plenty uh, for a micro that's on fairly powerful motors. Uh, yeah, that's that. And that is how I start with a uh, initial tune on Beta Flight. So that is the Acrobrat done. And next up, and I don't know. I don't know what I should do next. Should it be, well, fuck it. You guys tell me what I should do next. Should I build, um, should I build Jamie's uh, three inch um, ripper? Or should I do a, um, my third glide five inch build? Uh, which I'm missing something for. There's no camera. Oh, motors. What was I gonna put on this? Oh, I gotta take the motors off. I gotta rob the motors off of something else. We'll build Jamie's rig. Now, this is so big sitting on my desk. Anybody comment? If you guys comment, I'll do whatever you say. Quick note, change yeah, Quadrophenia, so I go back and forth with that. Um, the uh, the danger of adding yaw in on the iTerm Relax is um, oscillations and vibrations. Um, I have had really good luck with turning it on, and when I turn it on, the reason why I like it on is I do this uh, movement where I fly past an object of some interest as fast as I can basically and, and as close as I can and as soon as I get to about here I slam both sticks in one direction and do an exact like a complete when well, I tried to do a complete 180 and just feather the throttle and, and I pitch back a little bit to kind of extend the um, to extend the backwards uh, uh, momentum um, and when I do that really hard it will uh, the yaw will bounce back a little bit um, and I can it's it's a bit of a balance between that I term cutoff and adding it in. So I always try to fly it with the yaw in there initially, uh, because what the I term relax is doing is really really good, um, preventing the eye from winding up. I would love for it to do that on the yaw axis. So if it's not going to have the oscillations, um, screw it. I'll leave it on. So that's kind of where I'm at, but it is, I am kind of balancing that, and I, and I actually would like to do, um, I've never really back-to-back -back that, because you have to change the goddamn um, cutoff in the CLI, 
but I do have one of those speedy bees, which gives me access to the um, to the CLI pretty easily in the field. So that's actually a good thing to back to back. Um, but there it is. I got to tear these Emacs stickers off, I guess, since it doesn't have Emacs motors anymore. But uh, yeah, we'll fly this tomorrow and see how the jello situation is. Uh, I am on the red, uh, the red grommets on both the clean and dirty plates as well as on the flight controller stack. This is also now a good time to double check your soft mounting on your flight controller. Ooh, that's nice and squishy. That is terrific. I like this setup where there's Sometimes this setup can actually be too loose. On five inches, this tends to be too loose. Um, but on micros, I really like this setup the, where the, the frames that have the, the, um, the holes like over, it's like M3 oversized for these uh, nice grommets. And then the grommets on the flight controller as well. It really lets that flight controller move around and, and soak up a lot of the vibes. I really, really dig that, um, that setup on micros. But it's pretty rare. Uh, we're kind of... Uh, hemming and hawing whether or not we're gonna have that on the um, uh, the reckless uh, not reckless uh, ripper build and see this is what I was saying about like loose but not too loose this is actually the slightest bit too tight Man, it's gonna be hard to show you there we go so the wires coming out of the camera are loose enough that they have movement, right? So if like something happens, if the camera shifts or something like that, they shouldn't pull off, but they're also not so loose that they're gonna fly out. I, I do wish I'd cut a little bit more. I, w I wish there was a little bit more wiggle on this, but um, yeah. Can't always get them on the first shot. Which one is it? It's the, it's the ground wire that's too short. And now what I could do to lengthen the ground wire is just un... And like next time I pull this apart, I'll probably do this. Um, I can take the ground wire out of my little um, twisted tries setup and just run the ground wire straight so it's not coiling. That'll give it a little bit more uh, room. But this will be all right, we'll be fine. Sweet, let's put it on the shelf. Move on to the next. Actually, I might call it. Um, I did change up the top of this, the top of the shelf. You guys might dig this. It'll take you for a, take you for a walk. What is this? Why did I have this up there? Oh, I know I had this up there. Uh, let's put that there. Let's go on a walkabout. I got that um, arcade thing out of here and put both of my Stig helmets up here. This is uh, this is the black Stig from seasons one, two, and three. Um, exact. Same setup, Simpson, uh, Simpson Super Speedway with the black visor, uh, and then this is Kristen's helmet, which is the uh, Simpson Razorback with the um, hollow holographic, whatever the fuck it's called, eighty dollar visor, um, and then I finished hanging up some extra. These are pretty much all on the on the top. Those are all blown up. Well, so the top left is a, uh, a blown up prototype glide frame. Um, with the prototype frames, like eventually if you break, on that one it was the top plate, right? I broke the top plate, there's no more prototype top plates. So <laughs> there it sits. Um, uh, middle is the uh, Rotorite CL1 with the um, like one of two or one of three Rampage uh, sticker skin sets that was given to me at Rampage. Um, and then this is the uh, CB5 uh, prototype, which, um, yeah, same deal. It just blew up and, you know, no more prototype parts available. And then this is, um, this is my very first, uh, five inch frame, actually the, uh, OG flow ride, um, that I put back together with a little, uh, all in one flight controller ESC that I got for 30 bucks. Um, hype trains I had laying around. Uh, this is where the rush VTX is. Uh, so this is like a really, really cheap, uh, little basher of a build that I haven't even, I, I maidened it to make sure it was all right, but I haven't flown it since then. That's one of my main glides. Um, that's the other main glide. Uh, and then this is the prototype uh, glide that's that's shrunken down 
Uh, it's like 10 grams or so lighter. Um, and I kind of did the same thing. I did. I had another one of those all-in-ones. Um, and then th this is actually where I'm stealing the motors from uh, for the other glide that I'm going to build. So I'll wait on that. <clears throat> but I think that's going to just about do it. It's getting late, and I don't necessarily want to start. Well, all right, so there is a question, and I will at least pull this... Uh, build out of the box to see so that you guys can see what's going on and I'll, I'll tilt the camera down again just to give us that different perspective and keep kind of switching things up again let me know which uh, which camera angle you guys like better and I will stick with it gotta get those gotta get those toolbox eyes in that's important alright so Jamie traded me like three sets of uh, Lumineer 2407-1700s, um, and in exchange, I am building her a micro. And it's a bunch of stuff that I had laying around that uh, I knew I would eventually just kind of do this, just do a build and then sell it. But this worked out perfectly because this is going to fly amazing. This is going to be pretty much a clone of like the uh, the the CV122 Generation One um, of the Mini Alien style frame from Rotorius. Uh, this is going to be a carbon copy of that that frame that I was flying in that quad camp at flat quad camp at Atlanta. Flat camp. Great quad camp Atlanta. So this is going to be um, pretty much exactly that. So it's going to perform really well. A, a build that Drew Camden said, and I'm pretty much quoting, this is one of the best flight experiences I've ever had in my life. Um, so yeah, it's going to fly good. It is my like old standby go-to setup that I've been building over and over and over again for the last year and a half of a Speedex, uh, Speedex IS-20. Uh, was it a $30 ESC? Yeah, I think it was a $30 ESC. Uh, Maytech F411 flight controller. $25 flight controller. Um, this is a weird little VTX that doesn't have smart audio that I got. It's actually from UBAD. It's a, it's a UBAD. Um, looks like a VTX03. Um, but it's MMCX. And being from UBAD, it's like awesome. And then... Uh, I think Jamie flies Crossfire, so I'm I'm just gonna maybe she'll run an RxSR on this. I'll wire it up for an RxSR because it's kind of stupid to do Crossfire, uh, in my opinion, on a micro. I don't ever want to have the experience of flying a, a micro long range. That sounds like absolute torture. Uh, <clears throat> and then uh, so this is the three inch. CV frame um, that I'm going to do on two and a half inch props with these RCX 1304 5000s. Um, Alright, Ty K. Uh, smaller the frame, the higher the chance of jello, not necessarily. Looking at two inch alien style builds, is there a way to pull off the clean dirty without the clean dirty frame design the Acrobat has? Absolutely not. Clean dirty is a bastard. Um, Tommy, so Quad Camp Atlanta lined up uh, with kind of Tommy building the Acrobrat. So after after Quad Camp Atlanta, him and I kept in touch, and it's hard, man. It, it's hard to design a clean, dirty frame that's going to crash well. Um, and I, I kind of can't believe that he was able to do it. Uh, there are just so many sacrifices that you have to make. Uh, so, yeah, the, the Acrobrat is very unique in that respect. Soft mounting just the camera... Um, which some of the other micro frame makers have uh, been doing does absolutely nothing because there's the, the camera doesn't weigh enough. The whole point of the clean dirty system is that you put as much mass as possible on the clean plate so that it just wants to stay in place and just cruise through the sky. And then your dirty plate can do whatever the hell it wants. So believe it or not, like adding mass to the clean plate, like a bigger battery, like going from a 650 to an 850, will noticeably make the footage smoother because you're adding more mass to this clean plate, so that's just more 
mass that doesn't want to move, right? Like a, an object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. I can't believe I remember that. Um, so the more mass you have on that clean plate, the more it's going to resist the dirty plate wobbling all over the plates as four motors, four props, and everything else gets all banged around. Um, so yeah, the, the clean, if, if it's a clean, dirty frame, you'll know it. <laughs> it'll be a totally different looking beast. It'll pretty much look exactly like the Acrobrat. Um, your other question, though, is really interesting, actually. The smaller the frame, the higher the chance of jello. Um, I would, from a technical standpoint, I would actually say the opposite of that. Um, the smaller the frame, the shorter the arms, the stronger the arms. Um, although, at that point, they're probably going to make it the, the arms thinner. So, yeah, that doesn't play. Um, so, yeah, it, it's... Uh, um, the size of the frame doesn't necessarily have a chance, ha have an impact on Jello. Um, what it does have an impact on is how big of a prop that you can run, and the size of the prop has a lot to do with the KV of the motor, the RPM of the motor that you're going to spin. Um, so, I don't know. What's the kitten doing? He wants to come in. There's a kitten that wants to come in, guys. Come in. There he is. He's alive. Look at that neck. Look at this neck. Come here, buddy. And there's a mess in here. Oh, there he goes. He's down. He's down, guys. Let's get him. So this is the normal side of his neck. <laughs> and let me see if I can get him to roll over without him running away. Oh, nope. Show everybody your janky neck. Come on. Come on. Look this way. Look towards my hand. There's janky neck. There it is. Isn't that horrifying? <laughs> it was all scabbed over, but the scab fell off yesterday. But uh, it's funny because it's like the cheat code for scratches. Like if he's being bad, all we have to do is scratch his little shaved neck. And he's cool. And then his belly is all shaved too, but I'll probably get about one second of showing you that before he attacks me. The scar is almost gone. The, the scar on his stomach is like... It's like that. It's huge, man. They cut him way down. And now, of course, he wants to get out. No, you're stuck in here forever, buddy. You have to stay. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, that's this build uh, that I'm going to do, I guess, next time on the stream. Um, this is funny. There's a bunch of stuff wired up to this flight controller already. This might be like a 20 minute build. I guess it depends if they're, I gotta like check where the motors are going. Cause I don't know if, I don't think this SC was with this. Well, I can kind of tell. Where are the pins? Pins on the top, pins on the top. Nah, it's wrong. Oh wait, no, no it's not, no it's not. That's good. Well shit, this will plug and play. Well, that's kind of nice. This build is kind of done. Because this is an RXSR wire. This is this is for a run cam. Um, she was going to use a Fox ear. So I will swap this. I will swap this over to a Fox ear harness. Well, cool. That's, that's good news. That, that means this is going to be a quick one. So then I can uh, jump into the five inch. Cool. So next stream we will build little stellar fox a uh, two and a half inch slash three inch ripper with the venerable RCX 1304 5000s. And uh, yeah, may take out 411 Speedix IS20, 20, 20 amp, BL Heli S, awesome little U Bad VTX, and I could put an XM Plus. No, I'll leave this. She's got, um, that's right, she told me she has extra ARC SSRs because uh, that's what she ran before she went Crossfire. So she'll be able to just plug and play the ARC SSR, and uh, yeah, that'll be cool. Another micro convert. You heard it her first, and she's now a Rotorite sponsored pilot. 
Um, so we will have a, a Rotorite sponsored pilot micro convert on our hands before we know it. Alright guys, thanks for hanging. Um, hit my Patreon if you like this kind of stuff and you want other secret things. Raphael with the last second question, and it's a good one. Um, parts list for the Acrobrat. Alright, let's do it. We're gonna do it. So, <laughs> this is actually gonna be a very frustrating parts list because um, a lot of the parts are coming out soon. <laughs> uh, let me get this rotated around. Let's see. Apologize for the way that my face looks. I had the razor on four instead of six by accident. And it just cut all my face hair off. So, Acrobrat, ideal Acrobrat build for freestyle. Um, these T motors or the I flight motors that are coming out. Um, I don't know if T motor wants me to say the size on these yet, but it's close to the I flight size, which is 1506. I flights are going to be 1506. Either those or these T motors, um, for sure. Absolutely no questions asked. The, the big unknown is whether or not those I flight motors are going to be smooth like these. Um, or if they're just going to be another notchy ass race motor. Um, so that's the big question mark. I will answer that question mark when um, Joshua gets them in and we do his Acrobat build. Cameras, wait for the, uh, the run cam. I don't even know what they're calling it. The run cam dual lens in a single body setup. Uh, that's what you want for the camera. Uh, a flight controller. I'm a huge fan of the Talon F7 with the MPU 6000. Uh, ESC do the um, Speedix GS25 because it's BL Heli 32, so you'll be able to do RPM filtering without having to pay um, Joe Lucid for his BL Heli S version. And I have to assume that the BL Heli 32 version will be better. Well, maybe not. No, I don't think it will be better. I think it'll be the same thing. But you won't have to do. You'll be able to just flash in beta flight and go. Um, and that ESC is going to start going on sale soon because I think they're going to replace it with one of their new ones with the grommets and whatnot. But yeah, Speedix GS25 ESC for sure. Um, receiver of your choice. I like the RXSR, um, and I I don't like to recommend such a high end product but VTXs are super important um, and it's not that much money. I think it's only 30 bucks, uh, but this is the, the uh, TBS Pro 32 VTX. Um, the Ishin VTX 03S is awesome, but you have to get it from Banggood, which is a pain in the ass. Um, and then there's that Cricut, that Cricut Nano that um, Nick Burns runs that's supposedly really good. But, I don't know, I am not a huge TBS fan, and this thing is awesome. And being able to go up to 400 milliwatts is really nice. So I would actually say screw it, spend the money. Um, any one of these little axes, I would recommend getting one of the new gen smaller ones. Uh, TrueRC makes them, you can get them from their website, or they make the, the actual axes on Lumineer, so it's the same antenna. Um, but get the new smaller ones, because these, they're a little too heavy and they can bounce over and get into the props. Uh, I think that's about it. Batteries, uh, GNB all day. GNB white labels uh, the RDQ batteries. This is just a GNB battery um, that RDQ has a make for them. So either RDQ or GNB if you can find the legit ones. Uh, 4S, <clears throat> 650 or 850 or both. I get both. Um, if I'm doing just straight up like acro stuff or on the 650s. If, if I want to fly a little bit farther or longer, I have the 850s. Um, I think that's it. Props, uh, Gem Fan 3028. Yeah, 3028s. Uh, or 
the Emacs Avan 3 inch props. The Emacs Avan 3 inch props are very fragile though. These are fragile, but those are fragile on a whole different level. Um, and yeah, that's about it. I run zip ties on this standoff back here uh, for the um, receiver to make an L, to make a 90. Uh, once I go over to Crossfire, I might put this on Crossfire. I don't know what I'll do at that point. Um, and then I run the um, uh, VTX antenna out of 45 right in the middle so that when I'm sat up like that flying, it's pretty much level. And this is also getting it as far away from these guys as I can within reason. And I just do it all with zip ties. No sense putting a, bunch, a big TPU block back there um, that's going to weigh like five or six grams. Oh, somebody wanted me to weigh this. Almost forgot. All right, wait, oh, it's the wrong way. So I'm just gonna half-ass this. So my hunch is gonna be uh, like about 200, I think. Maybe a little less, wow, it's a lot less. Jesus, 183. Damn, okay, this, this shaved a bunch of weight and that's with big motors, um, damn. That is good news. So with a, with an 850, it's 285. So I think that means it would be 265 with a 650. Let me see if I can find one real quick. I think the 650 is pretty much on the nose, um, uh, 20 grams less than the 850. So let's see. There it is, 265. So there you go, there's an Acrobat with big motors, big power motors. Um, two cameras, single run cam split board, uh, regular old flight controller, ESC, nothing else too special. Um, some TPU on the front for the second camera setup, um, and that's about it. So let's kill the stream so I can go scratch the kitten because I've been neglecting him as well as Kristen, my wonderful wife. And uh, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Again, thanks for hanging. Hit the Patreon. What am I showing him? Oh, there he is again. He says goodnight. He says goodnight, guys. <laughs> Kitten says goodbye. Kitten says go to hell. Mm. Say something. No. Say something, Kitten. He's a All right, guys. <laughs> thanks for hanging. Talk to you guys later.